You're such an asshole. MobileAssholeConsulting.com, live from Denver, but it's not live because you're watching it. Blah, blah, blah. And we just woke up. You gotta get the work done in the morning so you can go and play at night. Uh, anyways, is this working? It is working. All right. Uh, when two people are dating, especially younger people, I often hear stories from guys that sound something like this. I was dating this girl, then we had a fight over insert subject. We got drunk at a party together, and I heard that she slept with Chad Thundercock. So I messed, I'm so messed up over it, dude. But she called me back crying and said that it was a mistake and that she still has feelings for me. I just don't know, man. Should I take her back? I heard my one girlfriend got a girl pregnant. Uh, my one friend got a girl pregnant and then she blah, blah, blah. Aaron, not to sound like a dickhead, but how do people even get themselves into situations and relationships like this, especially as adults? I'm so averse to the idea of being cheated on, pregnancy, child support, alimony, divorce, rape, STDs, etc., that I avoid party girls or girls who sleep around like the fucking plague. I would rather be alone than be with someone who's that dramatic, fickle, and possibly narcissistic. Was there a point in your life when you realized that chasing women wasn't necessarily a good lifestyle choice? All right, outstanding questions. Let's go to the first question here. <clears throat> Not to sound like a dickhead. But how do people even get themselves into situations and relationships like this, especially as adults? All right, it's called hormones. That's how it is. Now, you, this, this uh, scenario you paint, I was dating a girl and we had a fight over insert subject. That right there already tells me you're talking a girl in her teens or mid to early 20s. Uh, because I, you could call it shit testing, you could call it, I'm too old to give a shit anymore. And it's a wonderful position to be in. But they do that uh, in order to see if they can assert control over you, whether you'll stand up to them. Frankly, then also, this is increasingly so, but it was uh, the case in my generation. These girls are so... Let's face it, guys. Face it. You don't date the ugly ones, do you? If you date the ugly ones, this doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. That's why you always want to go for that girl that looked totally nerdy. But if you took her glasses off, you could see it, or she makes us a little bit overweight, you could get her to run. You're like, holy shit, she'd be hot if she lost 15 to 20 pounds, and I can, I'm can i the running guy to do it. Or you're like, oh, she just doesn't cuss ears, but she's really pretty. That's where the, the sharp guys would go look in their teens and their 20s. But those gals are far and few between. So you chase after the hot ones. Well, hot girls, especially in their teens and their 20s, are at their peak of societal power. They have the one commodity that half the population wants, and it's not oil, it's not diamonds, and it's not gas, it's feminine youth and beauty. And so society bends over backwards to spoil these girls. They're never wrong. Again, quote Bill Burr, nobody corrects them because they want to fuck them. And they grow up incredibly entitled and incredibly spoiled. And so the slightest offense, the slightest, inf not infraction, the slightest inconvenience in their life becomes a crisis and a tragedy and you should have been on it because their ex-boyfriend did that and their daddy took care of that and here you are you're a 19 year old dope and you ain't got the money or the funds you're just like ah, i'm glad i got paid today so i could eat food uh that's what happens so right there you say i was dating this girl I had a fight over insert su insert subject um you don't get in fights you have conversations as you get older you say this is not going to happen or maybe the girl gets really drunk and you're like, and then maybe a little bit more, hey, hey, hey. Or you get drunk, right? Every once in a while there's, but as you get older, you don't have these like screaming arguments anymore. You just don't. Because there's no drama or emotion or bullshit. You're mature adults. And you're based, you're, you're, you're anchored into reality. Uh, when you get those, like when, if you, okay, here's how to tell the dump a bitch. If you say, what's wrong? If you don't know, I'm not telling you. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. And that's the type of fucking shit you're dealing with there. We got drunk together at a party. She slept with that Chad Thundercock. Yeah, you're in your 20s and your teens. Uh, and, uh, and hormones, again, I know men have a higher demand for sex than women, but women also want to have sex. They've also been conditioned and programmed that you should go out and sleep with every guy that you want and you're liberated. And it's true, you are. Um, and, but th at the same time, they do want to get plowed by Chad Thundercock. And if... You know, Chad Thundercock is a guy. You have that in common. Here he is. He's a really good looking guy. And all these girls are throwing themselves at him. You damn right, Chad Thundercock is going to go and bang your sort of girlfriend, ex girlfriend, current girlfriend, whatever. 
Then they come back crying, saying it was a mistake. That's because they realize that Chad Thundercock is not going to be there for them long term. Uh, they might actually have some moral regrets over it. They might feel, you know, they, oh God, I hurt his feelings, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you're definitely in your solid teens and 20s uh, with this scenario. So to get back to not to sound like a dickhead, but how do people even get themselves into situations or relationships like this, especially as adults? They get into their relationships like this because of hormones. Girls want to fuck guys and be conditioned to fuck all the, you know, the bad boys and the alpha and all that other standard stuff. You boys are also up there. You, yeah, I want to get you because, well, we're guys. Um, and at the age of 19, 20, 21, 22, to all the way up, I'd say to 26, 27 in some cases, you're not capable of being real adults when it comes to relationships. So you get into these dramatic bullshit type of relationships. Every guy's been there. And if you would heed the advice of the manosphere and the internet and the red pill or older brother, you know, America's older brother, asshole consulting, we're trying to make it so you boys avoid it. Or at least you understand it. Because you guys are going to go chase the cute girl. And you're going to get her. She's going to be crazy and psycho. And then probably one of the worst experiences being a young man is when you're doing everything right and she's still pissed off and she delivers that line, if you don't know, I'm not telling you. You guys have got to dump that bitch. That, and now, your hormones are over here. And your, your brain might be capable of doing this, but you're going to not. You're going to pay attention, attention to your dick and not your brain. And you're going to put yourself through hell, psychological hell. And then she's going to go fuck Chad Thundercock, or she's going to dump you, or you're just going to have enough, you're going to dump her. Then you get slashed tires, because nobody dumps her. That the old captain had twice. Not slashed tires, but I dumped. There were two girls that I dumped that had never been broken up with before, and they did not take it nicely. I did get slashed tires, and I got punched. Because uh, how dare I tell a woman that I don't want to spend my time with her. You know what? I think I'm going to file complaints. I'm going to file a sexual assault complaint. No, not assault. Well, just regular assault. That's regular assault. Punching, that's regular assault. And even though that happened 15 years ago, I'm going to do that. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that's how they get into situations like that as you get older. Shoot, your testosterone goes down as a guy and it almost frees you up. Just like, I fuck no. <laughs> fuck you. You want to go back to Iraq? No. No. You want to go back to Vietnam? No. Just sit here on the beach and let that country be taken over. Fuck it. That's um, uh, I'm so averse today. So was there a point in your life when you realized that chasing women wasn't necessarily a good lifestyle choice? Yeah. All right. There were two instances. One was in college. <clears throat> it was the end of my freshman year. I remember this very distinctly. And what basically had transpired in that year is you learned that high school, I'm sorry, college is high school version 2.0. All the promises you were told about people being mature and growing up. And that's where the real smart people, no, no. The, it's it's not even they let dumb people in and what's worse is now that they're in college they think they're smart and they're not smart um and i was i had no money i, I had to support myself and it was more of a survival need that i did not have the time to chase girls i would chase the girls like every freshman boy did and it was it was it basically pay rent eat and pay tuition or be starving and chase after girls. I'm like, I don't have time for this. I just did not have time for it. And I remember saying, I do not have time for this bullshit anymore. Because you get dates where they'd stand you up or there'd be drama or they'd be like, well, I'm not having sex. And then it's like, uh, I got very limited time, babe, before I got to get back to work or go back to school and I got to study. I'm not like you where Mumsy and Popsy are paying for fucking everything. I got, and it, so it, it was a force, poverty forced me to prioritize uh, my life in a way that women were not up top. Because every 19-year-old boy, you, go, you guys want to get laid. That's the number one. Unless you got to eat. <laughs> unless you unless you got to not die in a Minnesota winter and you need lodging. Then you put your survival first above women. But women are still a second close. Uh, but yeah, so that was kind of the fourth thing. And then the second time, um, it was... Right after that girl punched me because I said I didn't want to date her anymore. And that, that happened when I was like 30, 31, 32. And I, that's when I realized I'm like, this isn't worth it. I'm mean, already, I was getting less and less patient. I had already had a, a red pill awakening. I, I woke up at 25 
But that didn't mean I, I was like a full MGTOW and get the women out of here. I still would like women. I still chase after them. Plus, I was good at it. This is when the old captain was looking good and he was on top of the ballroom dancing. and the, it, it wasn't that hard. But when I got punched by that gal, it wasn't like, it was just like, and I was like, really? <laughs> I could break your fucking neck right now and be in my rights. I was like, just get the hell out of here. Did call the cops to file a complaint. Every, you ever get assaulted by a, a girl, boys, you call the cops immediately and you file a, re a report. You don't have to press charges, but you do file a report. Because that you are the first one there. And that shows that they're like, oh, hey, he said that you assaulted him, not you. Because then they'll call, oh, my God. You. Then they bang their wrists on a, on a thing and hit themselves. And Anyway, um, that was where I'm like, I'm, I'm, again, I said, I'm done with this bullshit. I have a better time. My buddy Brian told me, and he's older than me. He's older than me by about eight years. He says, a good glass of scotch will not let you down. He's not an alcoholic. He says, you know it, it's quantifiable. You know what's going to happen. It's not chaotic. It doesn't change on you. It's a known quantity, and you can assess its value. Is this worth $8 for a shot of Johnny Walker? And it will never let you down. A book. Well, a book might let you down, or a movie like it, but you, you understand, you know, okay, you know what you're getting into. A night hanging out with your buddies, watching the game, uh, making a good meal, uh, whatever it is, your hobbies, your interests, uh, the, the treats and, and, and uh, benefits of life, those are known quantities and you know you're going to get a rate of return. You invest the time or the money into a good hike, you know you're going to get a good hike. You invest your time and money into a girl, you don't know what you're going to get in exchange. Same thing faces women as well. They don't know if this guy's a, a loser. Does he does he work? Does he have a job? Is he up to his neck in student loans? But you, you don't. When you're investing in humans, you don't know if you're going to get a rate of return. But that happened to me. For whatever, 31. Let's just say. And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, and then instead of looking for really super hot chicks, which is what you're prone to do, um, I looked. Uh, for quality girls, not that I wasn't looking for quality. I want you want quality and you want hot, but that's almost mutually exclusive. Uh, and then I just like, yeah, you know what? I'm not looking for the hottest thing. I'm looking for a girl that's going to have a job. I mean, it really just your it just changes. Has a job, has no debt, works, supports herself, uh, is stable, is kind, is nice, and is bangable. Not drop that, go just bangable. Just, can I get it up for her? There. And that's, that's where I think a man really mature and, and you wise up because you're, you, I mean, it never goes away. Yeah, there's always that hot little piece of ass walking down the road or something like, hey, how you doing? Um, but the, you get old enough where you actually develop some self, but you first you realize that some, they're, they're all like that. They're all like that. Then you realize you're gonna die. And then you develop self-respect when you realize, hey, wait a minute, I was right this entire time. I wasn't the one, like, uh, 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 doing something wrong because I couldn't get your hints. I even have a buddy, his girlfriend, like, you weren't picking up on my hints. This guy's like 40. <laughs> I'm like, fuck that. Uh, you realize the bullshit for what it was and how blinded you were with hormones. And then you're like, oh, yeah, you know what? Fuck you. And then you get self-respect. Like, no, nah, I'm not wasting my time with you. I'm not. No, I'm not going to the clubs. I'm not going to the bars. And then this shit drops off real quick with, oh, I was drunk. I didn't know. Oh, I'm so. It, it, and it, it goes away. It goes the fuck away because you grow the fuck up. So, yes, I think it, it depends on, I think, um, especially for you young boys who are in college. I don't know how, I mean, the, the finances of college might be harsh enough that it forces you to kind of put money and finances and surviving ahead of women. Um, but there's a, maybe a second, that, that may not happen because you guys are just borrowing money and, and it's free money, right? The loans are free money, right? Bernie will make it go away. Um, but when you get older and it's kind of like a cross where, where your hormones drop and then the girl's behavior just becomes intolerable and you're like, yeah, no more. No more. Waste, wasted 
I wasted enough time since I was 13 enduring this hell with you girls. We're not dealing with this. Any and, and by the way, you were all faking it. You were all acting like you knew something we did, and all it was is you were just hot. That's all it was. There was no intelligence. There was no interestingness. There was no intrigue. It was just you were a pretty set of tits, and every other guy went after you. And so that's... That is when, and you see it, you see it, you read Return of Kings, all these guys, about 30, <clears throat> they, they really, especially after divorce, that, whew. but it, the girls really start to go down on the priority list. I mean, they'll always be there, uh, but all of a sudden it's kind of like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta fix the car. I'm gonna stay in and watch the Charlie Brown cartoons. I'm gonna enjoy this nice, good Johnny Walker, because I know it's a, it's a, 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 a measured, known, entity uh, and then you know then you start getting the articles in the New York Times of the New Yorkers it's, why can't I find a man and um, girls marrying themselves and, and but then the guys are the guys have gone ghost by that time uh, you know the guys are just like yeah I do remember a long time ago about 10 years ago I had a, a female friend who was 47 at the time she's like where are all the guys you're a good-looking young man why could where do the guys go I'm like what your age she's like yeah I'm like they're at home they don't go out anymore. Well, how do they expect to find a girl? I'm like, they don't. And the 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 shock on her face was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, they're not. They're not. They're like, well, how do they expect to find someone? They don't want to find someone. Oh, how are they going to be married? Like, no, no, no. They were married. They got divorced. They da, 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 da. They don't want it. They're they're just happy being not necessarily hermits, but riding their motorcycles, doing whatever they want to do, and enjoying life and camping and hiking because because it was such a hellish experience for twenty to thirty years. They're like I. No, I'm out. And for that reason, I'm out. All right, that's it. You guys got questions, the old captain's got answers. America's older brother over at assholeconsulting.com. Not relegated to Americans. We help out Australians, East Indians, uh, United Kingdomers, which is a term I think I just made up, and anybody else who speaks English, because I don't. So, All right, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Toodles.